Greetings YouTube, Marcus here from the 22nd Legion. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World Iceborne Weapons Guides video. For this video, we will be going through from basics to advanced guide for one of the three range options, the light bow gun. So some overview for the light bow gun. The light bow gun is a light and efficient weapon you can use as opposed to the heavier counterpart, the heavy bow gun, and the more skill focused, the bow. While not great in terms of damage per hit as compared to the other two, but the utility and the efficiency on this weapon more than makes up for it. The light bow gun or LBG is not a very complex weapon but at the same time it is not a very simple weapon. Some may suggest that this weapon is a simple aim and shoot weapon but there are some knowledge to be learned for this weapon in order to use it effectively. So I'm gonna go right ahead right now and show you the basics of light bow gun. As you can see right now the light bow gun is actually in the unship position. You just sort of like put it at the back of the hunter as you can see right here. So in order to draw it out you can either press, for me it's a R reload and I think for for the uh, for the PlayStation, it's just uh, you just basically just press the left trigger if I'm not mistaken, and then you will sort of like draw the weapon. Or you can actually just simply just go to go ahead and sh press your attack button. For me, it's the left click button. So in order to aim in this uh, using this weapon is by basically pressing V. Or right, or I think it's the right trigger, if I'm not mistaken. And then you will see this sort of like this cursor coming out. Okay. So in order to shoot whatever ammo that you have right now, it's at uh, normal ammo too. Yeah. You just press on the left click, the fire. I think for the place the for controller for consoles, I think it's both. Uh, both the left and right trigger. I don't know which, I forgot which one is aim and which one is shoot, but if I'm not mistaken, I think the left one is aim and the right one is uh, shoot, if I'm not mistaken. So this that's for the normal attack. There's another one which is the right click, which is called the Vive Encounter, which is, and if, if you notice the bottom right, the, the the tree little thing those is actually the viron blast count the viron blast mines you can actually you can place down tree at once or you can basically just wait for it uh to, to put some other times the way you use this is when a monster is about to attack you let's say this this pole here is a monster and it's about to attack you and your the mines is between you and the monster when it, the attack comes, it will sort of like explode, make a very, very big explosion, and it also deals a shit ton of damage. Now, to use the clutch claw from the light bow gun on an unsheathed position, you simply just click on the aim button where you usually aim uh, the slinger, and then you just press right click on the monsters when, uh, when you're uh, targeting specific body part that you want. So what up here, we can do the weapon attack. Now the weapon attack is a little bit different. It's not the normal, uh, it's, uh, it's not the right trigger. It, I think it's, just a, I think it's the, uh, the triangle button on the console. Now since the, uh, the light bow gun is a light weapon, uh, whenever you use the weapon attack on the monster's body part, it's gonna drop the slingers and it will take two weapon attacks in order for you to tenderize the monsters like for example right now uh, I did I did uh, use two times the weapons attack on that monster that which is why right now it's tenderized you can tell by the four arrows on the damage numbers yeah so that's basically it another thing is that uh, you can also you can also smack the monster to smack the monster up to three times each if the monster is not enraged and then you just simply just do this 
Now, if, if you want to use the slinger shot, the flinch shot, uh, you just press the right trigger in order to use the flinch shot. I think this is uh, this is basically generic for all weapon types. So yeah, that's that's basically how the clutch claw works. So if what happens if you try to if you wanted to use the clutch claw while your sheath, uh, when you're unsheathed, where you have your uh, weapon out. So for me, you just basically uh, press C and then it will change to the slinger. Oh, and I don't have a slinger. Okay, so let me just get that slinger. And then I could actually shoot and, isn't, and then I could change to the slinger thing. And then I am able to shoot the slinger pods. Or I can just go straight to... Oops. Oh, whoops. That's not what I want. Anyways. Uh, so we can... Oh, you can also uh, aim, uh, change your slinger. For consoles, I think it's you just press on the right joystick and then it will change the change the uh, the the, sl the aim type here so you can either do uh, fire your slinger or you can do a slingshot a clutch claw sorry <laughs> yeah so that's basically it for the clutch claw next we will go into the ammo types which is the bread and butter for the light bowgun as well as the heavy bowgun First, we have the normal ammo. As the name suggests, is a normal ammo where you shoot one of the ammo in one straight line. This ammo will be your most basic ammo type when you first got into the game. Most ammo crafting requires normal ammo 1 to craft, but rest assured that you will have an unlimited amount of them. As the number increase behind the normal ammo, for example normal ammo 2 and normal ammo 3, the damage will increase accordingly as well as the recoil. Next we have everyone's favorite spread ammo. Spread ammo functions like a shotgun shell where you shoot multiple pellets in one ammo. This ammo will require you to be in the face of the monster as much as possible in order to maximize your spread ammo damage. As the number increase for the spread ammo, for example, spread ammo 2 and spread ammo 3, the number of pellets shot and the damage will increase, but the reload time and recoil will increase as well. For pierce ammo, as the name suggests, you will shoot a piercing shot across the body length of the monster. This ammo works best on larger monsters, where the bullet can basically travel the whole length of the monster's body if you shoot the ammo when the monster is facing towards you. As the number increase for the pierce ammo, for example pierce ammo 1 and pierce ammo 2, the damage will increase and the distance between each tick of damage will be shortened at the cost of reload speed and more recoil. Next ammo we have is the infamous sticky ammo. The sticky ammo is basically a bomb that you shoot to a monster and the ammo will stick to the monster's body part for a short while and explode after a certain amount of time. This ammo will cause KO damage to the monster if you shoot the sticky ammo to the head. As the number of sticky ammo increase, for example sticky ammo 2 and sticky ammo 3, the damage and KO damage will increase at the cost of reload speed and recoil. Lastly, we have the poor slicing ammo. Similar to the sticky ammo, but instead of explosion, this ammo will slice up to 5 times to a specific body part of the monster. This ammo is Bogan's way of cutting the monster's tail if you really want to, but not really efficient. Sadly, this ammo was nerfed to the point of not really dealing enough damage without going back to the camp to restock if you solely focus on this ammo to kill the monster. There is only one type of slicing ammo at this moment in time unless Capcom decided to introduce rapid fire slicing. And that's it for the damaging ammo types. We will now move to the status ammo which are paralysis ammo, poison ammo, sleep ammo, and exhaust ammo. Status ammo are ammo types that does not necessarily deal damage but to build up status. 
Once the status threshold has been hit, the monster will then be in flick by that specific status. However, keep in mind that the threshold will increase the more times the monster is inflicted with that specific status. Lastly, we have support ammo types which are Demon Ammo, Armor Ammo, Recover Ammo, and Trang Ammo. Support ammo types are ammo types that you could shoot at your allies in a hunt. Well, at least except for Trang Ammo, which is used for capturing the monster. Demon Ammo is used to increase the attack power of allies for a short time, while Armor Ammo increases the defense of allies for a short time. Recover Ammo heals allies in the line of fire, meaning you can heal multiple allies if they line up in a straight line. This does applies to Demon and also Armor Ammo. Now lastly, we're gonna go through the customized mods for the Light Bowgun. You can access the customized mod menu for either from the smithy or any equipment box within the smithy or the gathering hub. First, we just go to, to go talk to the smithy and we will see you able to see customized bowgun. We're just gonna customize the bowgun that I currently have, which is the Tear of Blitz support. Now as you can see here, there are 4 mod slots on a Terra Blitz support due to it being upgraded to a Rarity 12 weapon. Any Rarity before Rarity 10 will have 3 mod slots instead of 4. So the first one that we have here is Recoil Suppressor. So what this does is actually, this will lower the recoil if, we t if we'd want to like shoot some of the bullets out right so as i said before in the in the ammo types uh, the higher the level of your ammo it's gonna increase your recoil so this one basically will decrease that recoil so for example if i do equip this one level of recoil you can see some ammos are being affected it will go down one level for example pierce ammo 2 this one will go from high to average so what the idea behind this is that we will want to have at the bare minimum we will want to have a average recoil this will allow us to shoot while moving any more recoil than that we will not be able to move while we shoot this one will helps you to lower down the recoil for this one the tower of blitz support you're gonna go you're gonna want to focus the rapid fire normal too so if I take a look at Rapid Fire Normal 2, it's already average, which is uh, you're, you're gonna shoot while moving. But I could potentially lower it down to low. But before I do anything else, I'm gonna go through everything first before I, I make my decision. So that is it for the recoil suppressor. You can have up to 4, but most likely you don't really need up to 4 except for some cases where your ammo as a very very high recoil or even high recoil you would want to bring it down next we have reload assist now for reload assist is like and like its name suggests is it will help quicken your reload speed of your ammo this one determines whether or not you reload while you walk or you reload in place meaning that you do not move or anything you just reload and it takes a long while to reload pure to iceborne meaning that if you do not have iceborne a reload assist tends to be more towards uh, those ammos like sticky ammo and also potentially some pierce but as of iceborne because of introduction to a new mod which i will talk about later this one is tend to be kind of useless because of that mod i will talk about it in a second so yeah that's basically for reload assist next we have deviation suppressor uh, div for this one we don't really need as much because it does not really affect you as much unless you're using the heavy bowgun sight but for light bowgun you don't really need to use this one since it's already a light weapon next we have close range up this one this close range up is basically a 30% increase in damage the closer you are to the monster however this one will kind of like decrease your effective range a bit this one is in favor of either the normal ammo or the spread ammo the range attack up is the exact opposite from the close range up but i rarely seen this being used for light bowgun even for pierce because there are other things that are more damaging than this one and then for this two right here this two as you can see it's grayed out because it's not available for the light bowgun 
the shield, the special scope, and the Wyvern Heart mod and Wyvern Snipe mod, these four mods are specifically for the heavy bowgun. And there's also one mod that is specifically for light bowgun, which I don't know, sorry, two mods which is specific for the light bowgun and not the heavy bowgun. The first one being Evade Reload. Now this is the mod that I said that that will tend to replace the reload assist. This evade reload is basically when you evade, based on how many mods, how many evading reload mods you put in your gun, you can basically uh, reload that same amount of ammo. If I put like uh, two evade reload, what this does is if I if, if I evade once, it's gonna reload two ammo into the chamber. Okay, so each time I press the spacebar, I think that's that's much more understandable. I, each time I press the spacebar or dodge an attack, it's gonna reload two ammo. And of course, I can just put in like four ammo for evading reload, and it will it, it will reload the whole chamber. But not, not really the whole chamber unless, of course, your ammo size, clip size is less than 4, then this would be a waste. <laughs> of course, there are other things that you could you should consider as well. So when should you use the evading reload is when your reload speed for that specific ammo type is very, very, very long. For anyone new to Iceborne, the evade reload might seem a bit flashy, but in actuality, in if you want to really use this efficiently, it's gonna take some time to practice and also to master. Next is the Riven Blast mod. So the Riven Blast mod is gonna it's gonna enable the Wyvern Blast counter. As opposed to the, the normal Reverend Blast mines where you just place it down, you're gonna change it where you launch the Reverend Blast and then when the monster actually attacks you, it's gonna explode and cause a lot more damage than the Reverend Blast mines. But the timing on this thing is a little bit complicated and it's... Uh, even myself, I, I could not really master this one. I still prefer the mines better. <laughs> Next, we have the power barrel. So this power barrel, uh, it, it, it what it basically does is that it specifically for elemental ammo and also the piercing ammo. What this does is th it actually slows down the ammo speed. So y if you notice, like the piercing and elementals, they, when they sh when you shoot the monster, it would tend to. Cr travel across the monster and in between it will have something like four to five ticks four to five ticks or maybe six or maybe three ticks of damage where you see all the numbers there yeah so if you equip this one it's gonna slow down the number of ticks meaning like if you normally you only get like three to four ticks this is basically gonna potentially increase to five to six ticks of damage. For the long barrel, it's uh, not really being used as often. What this does is it actually increases the range of your weapon. And also, as the description says, it enhances the ammo speed, extending both maximum and critical range. This one has something similar to the range attack up, but I'm not too sure. And that is all of the basics that you need to know for this light bowgun's basics video. I will do a follow-up video on the advanced guide to the light bow gun smooth sets as I don't really want to cram everything into this one video like my sword and a shield video. Once again I stream every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday on Twitch at uh, 7.30 GMT plus 8. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell icon for any latest video and I'll see you all in the next one.